Maeve. Well, next up, we have a TED-style talk, something a bit different. And the first giving, person giving it has been described as a visionary. Inma Martinez is a digital pioneer and an AI scientist. She has a track record in forecasting digital disruptions and how they will transform our lives. She's an advisor to the British and Spanish governments, the G7 and the EU, as well as to business, an impressive list. And she's going to speak to us now about the potentiality of data as a pillar of progress. So welcome, Inma, to the stage. Thank you. Over to you. Thanks, thank you, thank you. Thank you. At this very moment, and especially in this decade, Europe, the single market, finds itself across an incredible landscape where the data opportunity is manifesting. We can harness this data to create progress, but above all, social welfare and prosperity. And I mentioned the word progress because European companies of all sizes are today experimenting with more and more sophisticated methods of gathering data and managing it. And it's all in order to improve their operations, make better strategic decisions, commit less errors, but above all, for innovation. And social welfare is important because European citizens are living a digital splendor. The amount of digital products and services that Europeans use today is unprecedented compared to 10 years ago. And it is our duty to ensure that the regulatory frameworks and the way we allow for this data to be gathered and managed and turned into products obeys the highest benefit for everyone concerned. But data is not the big data of 2010. We, as a civilization, have gathered data since prehistoric times. It's only that we started to change the way in which we would store it into from physical forms, and now the data is all in the cloud, in the ether. But we've been doing this thing for thousands and thousands of years. And the reason is because when we gain information, we gain knowledge. And in before current era times, it allowed us to create order and to stipulate the way things should be done. For example, how a shop uh, where they make baskets would record the cost of raw materials and the work days of the laborers. And then the first uh, rules of commerce and even banking. But the data evolved. And in recent centuries, the data that used to be quantifiable, how many lands can you discover in the birth of cartography, became data for discovery. The data of the 18th and 19th century, and especially the 20th and the 21st, is data to explore our reality, and therefore data that began to look into the progress of mankind, of humankind. Now, the data of today is intensely addressing the problems and the challenges that we need to solve in this century, because it is applied data. We have to build today the data management systems that would allow us to address real, real issues. For example, how we will utilize resources in the future large urban centers, or something that really concerns us all, the mental health of Europeans. This is something that currently costs billions of euros to governments, because not only we need to treat these individuals, but we need to provide the social support and also, these people can no longer go to work and produce, so we're losing economic value of what they are offering to society. It's an enormous problem that we need to address, let alone something like pollution and the fragmentation of health in cities at physical level that affects children and the most vulnerable. These are the issues that are imposing themselves on the future smart cities. It's not just about electric bicycles, it's really making cities places fit for humans to live with quality of life. 
And when the internet of things explodes and becomes the internet of everything, because absolutely every single analog object fitted with a sensor will be able to share with us the enormous potentiality of their information, we will then be in a better position to make better products, create strategies that really fit for what they're meant to be. And this is just the beginning. The Internet of Everything is coming to agriculture, not just to Alexas at home. So what are the challenges that we face in the data economy? The number one is healthcare. We cannot, in the European Union, allow for hospitals to continue to create records for patients scribbled on pieces of paper. This is not allowing anyone to analyze the type of diseases that affect us, how they're being treated, and also, um, above all, improve the patient experience. And if AI begins to drive the prediction and detection of great illnesses like cancer and tumors, all of that is digital records that we all need to share and help us understand and build a better healthcare. Or the famous autonomous vehicles is safety. The reason why the auto industry is making level five automation is because cars will be safer if they drive themselves rather than us. And in that case, we need a regulatory framework to manage and make sense of all this data that will be generated affecting the safety of people and traffic flow. Or for example, the efforts that many SMEs companies are beginning to deploy in gathering data of their operations, of their supply chains, of how they conduct business, because there is pressure on them to deliver into the sustainable economy for the green economy. And above all, if we build digital services for people, they need to be ergonomic, they need to address what people need, but also their emotional states, their sense of pride in their lives, and everything has to fit really the human condition. Because when we approach the explosion of digitalization that we envision for 2030 and forwards, not only biometrics and logins and passwords are going to represent your identity, Absolutely every single digital product and services you use is creating a layer of information about you and your usage. And all of that is being embedded into the profile that is being created by you. So we need a regulatory framework to make sense and ensure that the data provenance is correctly assigned to each European citizen, that there are no mistakes in their identities because these are the directives that we face in Europe when we talk about making a welfare digital society. Every single digital product and service has to be fair, has to deliver equity to each person what they need, not the same quantity for all. And above all, that abides with existing consumer laws and that is age appropriate, which is a massive fight for us and data. And why we demand data to abide by these principles is because we are building artificial intelligence. Data is the bloodstream of AI. It's what we use in order to create detection, prediction, optimization, automation. And the data has to be integral and we need to uh, ensure that is the way it is, is not being manipulated in order for AI to be ergonomic, deliver value to people, personable, yeah, for a collective or for an individual, but above all, responsive. AI is about self-learning. So we put systems in the street to learn about humans. It's because they want them to learn more and more and more to deliver more value. And above all, that is transparent, meaning it can be auditable and that people can trust it. So. I encourage you to pay attention to the data that is taken from you in order to serve you, because in the very near future, it will be our responsibility as a single market to ensure that European citizens 
are served with systems and that their data is taken and managed for their highest benefit. Thank you very much. Emma, many thanks indeed for a thought-provoking vision of the future and the potential that data has to be this pillar of progress. Many, many thanks Thank indeed. You. Thank you.